Orthodontists are dental specialists trained in the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of dental and facial irregularities. In this video, we're gonna help you answer the question, should you become an orthodontist in 2021? We're gonna go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs used in this video are available at my blog at careerwatch slash blog slash orthodontist. Orthodontists have several roles and responsibilities. They supervise the facial growth in children. This includes teeth and jaws. They create preventative treatment plans that could include braces or retainers. They apply braces to patients to help align and straighten their teeth. And in some cases, they actually perform corrective jaw surgery on patients with facial imbalances. For more technical information on dental medicine, check out the Coursera course, Introduction to Dental Medicine. This course is taught by Dr. Hangorski in association with the University of Pennsylvania. It currently retails for about 50 bucks and currently has an average 4.8 star rating. So the first thing to consider before becoming an orthodontist is the debt situation. Just like general dentists, orthodontists have to go to dental school, graduate before they can begin the track of becoming an orthodontist. And dental school is extremely expensive, actually even more expensive than medical school. In 2018, the Wall Street Journal covered Mike Meru, an orthodontist that had over a million dollars in student loan debt. What's interesting about Mike Meru is he's actually just paying the minimum balance and then at the 25 year mark, it gets forgiven. So he's basically just paying $1,600 a month for 25 years. The total balance would be about $2 million. I link the article down below if you wanna read more about Mike's story becoming an orthodontist. Dental schools are extremely expensive, but one way people combat this is by going to in-state programs. In-state dental programs are tens of thousands of dollars cheaper than both out-of-state dental programs and private dental programs. The article also talks about how these programs, both in-state, out-of-state, and private, their prices are getting more, more and more expensive every single year, unfortunately. So looking at the salaries of orthodontists, they do pretty well. This data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It doesn't include commissions and other benefits. It only includes base salaries of employees. Orthodontists in 2019 had an average base salary of around $231,000 per year. This is far more than dental hygienists, and this is more than general dentists. Employee general dentists had an average base salary of around 178. Of the dental occupations, only oral surgeons tend to make a little bit more than orthodontists. We can also compare the average base salary of orthodontists against physicians and surgeons. On average, orthodontists tend to make more than pediatricians, psychiatrists, and family medicine physicians. They, however, do not quite make as much as anesthesiologists, gynecologists, and general surgeons. Fortunately for orthodontists, they've had pretty good wage growth over the past two decades. In 1999, the average base salary was around 151,000 per year. This grew to $230,830 in 2019. So over around 15 years, orthodontists have seen their wages grow by around $80,000 or about $5,300 per year. If orthodontists continue to see 5,300 per year as an average yearly wage growth, by 2021, the average base salary would be around 241,000 per year. And by 2029, the average base salary would be around $285,000. Geography also plays a big role in their compensation. Certain states tend to pay much more than others. In this map, the darker the blue the state, the higher the income. The highest paying state is the state of Washington where the average base salary is around 286,000 per year. Meanwhile, the lowest paying state for orthodontists is the state of Utah. In fact, wages in Utah are half what they are in the state of Washington. Other high paying states include the state of Washington, Minnesota, South Carolina, Iowa, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. So that covers the compensation of orthodontists. What is the job market like? Is this a growing field or is this a shrinking field? And regarding different labor markets, this is actually a pretty interesting occupation because the barrier to entry is so high. The first thing to understand about the job market for orthodontists is that it is extremely tiny. There are only around 6,000 employed orthodontists across the United States. Meanwhile, the dental industry, there's around 220,000 dental hygienists, 110,000 dentists, and there's only around 4,700 oral surgeons. 
One con of entering into a tiny niche occupation is sometimes you don't really get to decide where you want to live. Sometimes you have to cross state lines in order to get certain job opportunities. Even compared to other types of physicians and surgeons, this is a tiny field. There are more anesthesiologists, family medicine physicians, gynecologists, pediatricians. Pretty much all the physician and surgeon occupations are bigger than this field. And this field really isn't getting that much bigger. The number of employed orthodontists has actually fallen over the years. In 2004, the government recorded around 6,200 employed orthodontists, kind of went through a roller coaster ride, jobs kind of went up and down, but ultimately by 2019, there was around 5,990 employed. So since 2004, there's been a loss of around 200 employed orthodontists. The government, meanwhile, is anticipating about a 2% growth in the number of orthodontists. So basically, the number of orthodontists aren't expected to move very much over the next 10 years. By 2029, they're expecting around 6,100 employed orthodontists. So based off this information, it seems like this field is pretty stagnant. But when you look at the job postings across the United States, it says a very different story. We used Indeed.com, an extremely popular job search engine. It pulls in job postings from many different sources. And we searched for orthodontist job postings across the United States. We found that there was a little over a thousand job postings for orthodontists when there's only around 6,000 orthodontists employed across the country. This means that there is one job opening per six employed orthodontists. This is a great way to compare the demand, the number of job postings for an occupation, with the supply, the number of employed in that occupation. With orthodontists, it's clear there's definitely a shortage of orthodontists across the country. There could be many different reasons for this. The debt probably scares a lot of people away from this occupation. And it requires a lot of time to go to dental school and then pursue the track of becoming an orthodontist after dental school. As tuition continues to rise in in-state, out-of-state, and private institutions, this is probably just going to keep scaring people away from becoming an orthodontist. So it doesn't seem like this shortage of orthodontists is going away anytime soon. So let's say you're interested in becoming an orthodontist. Would this occupation be compatible with your interests? To determine this, definitely look into taking a free RIASEC assessment. A RIASEC assessment is an interest inventory where you answer questions regarding your interests in different areas. Once you finish the assessment, it gives you scores for six different themes. Orthodontists are a type of dentist, so their interests with dentists overlap a lot. They score high in the investigative theme, meaning they're curious, they like researching new things and discovering new things. People that score high in the realistic theme tend to be thrifty, reliable, they like working with their hands, being on their feet and being outdoors. So if you also take a RIASEC assessment and you score high in the investigative and realistic theme, this occupation might line up with your interests. As you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming an orthodontist in 2021. The debt situation for dentists and orthodontists is pretty crazy. It isn't uncommon for dentists to have over $400,000 in student loan debt. Dental school debt is worse than medical school debt, and it is worse than law school debt. But looking at wages, wages are pretty strong for orthodontists. Orthodontists by base salary make just as much as many physicians and surgeons. The other thing to keep in mind is there is a giant shortage of orthodontists going on right now, and this shortage probably isn't going to go away anytime soon. One con is this is a very tiny niche occupation, and you might have to cross state lines to find the right job opportunities for you. Are you an orthodontist? What do you enjoy about this occupation, and what do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.